The Dallas Cowboys are three and five, and now their star quarterback is set to miss the next several weeks. But we're going to provide you some optimism and hope in this episode of the Lot Don Cowboys Podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your daily Dallas Cowboys podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash Locked On NFL and use promo code Locked On NFL to win $50 instantly when you play $5. Welcome back. I am your host, Marcus Mosier. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosier. Joining me today, as always, is Landon McCool. You can follow him on Twitter at McCoolBCB. On today's show, we are answering your mailbag questions. We're going to talk about Mike Zimmer through eight games. We're going to talk about which players are going to be playing for their jobs over the final nine weeks of the season. But let's first start with this question, Landon. Um, it's kind of a twofold one is, can you guys give us some reasons for hope and optimism with this Cowboys team moving forward? And what is the state of the offensive line as we get into the future? That question is from Sean. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, 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 it's good that we kind of paired these questions together because I do think that, you know, some of the things that we've seen, especially in this last game, it felt like you're starting to see the offensive line congeal a little bit more. Uh, I think you're starting to see an offensive line that was, you know, run blocking a, a lot better this last week. Um, and I think that you you started to see uh, uh, guys like Tyler Guyton start to turn a corner a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought Terrence Steele played his best game of, of the season yeah. so far. Um, so uh, I, I think on the offensive side, you have some young pieces that are developing that will be on this team for you know for the long haul, and uh, and some some pieces on the offensive line that are starting to congeal that I think can you know have holdover benefits beyond just the season. Um, so those are all very positive things. And, and frankly, even as this season kind of continues to go on and if it continues to kind of trend the direction that it's been trending, I mean, that's something that I will be paying close attention to throughout the rest of the season is, is how that young offensive line is starting to kind of congeal together, start to play better football together, because that's something that will actually carry over to whatever happens next season. Right. Yeah. And I think on the other side of the ball, it's like you, you have to look at the kind of, shining stars that you've seen kind of in spite of all the other stuff that's happening in the defense, like overshone, right? I think sure. you've seen a guy that's like really kind of made a bunch of plays uh, despite kind of the, the chaos going around on, on around him, uh, despite having kind of a, a, a compromised defensive line for him to kind of be able to still be flying around and making plays, I think is a big thing. Um, and, and, and maybe just to throw one more other guy out, I, I think, We've talked about Chauncey Golson and and how he really mm -hmm. has stepped up in the role that he's played. Uh, I, I you know he's on a contract year, so it, it's not like that's necessarily a, a long term situation unless the Cowboys decide to offer him up a, a deal. But I do think you saw a lot of positive snaps from from the, from a guy that you've been working on developing for a long time. And and if you could fig if you wanted to figure out you know a short term team friendly deal that he might be interested in, I think that would be a, a good. That would go a long way to kind of helping you bridge the gap uh, for whenever you know Demarcus Lawrence starts to try to decide he wants to hang it up. Yeah, I, I want to talk about the offensive line, but first and foremost, long term beyond the 2024 season, one of the reasons that you should be optimistic is of the five money positions in the NFL: quarterback, wide receiver, offensive tackle, pass rusher, cornerback. You have established Pro Bowl or All Pro players at four of the five positions, right? That's really hard to do. There aren't very many teams in the league that have that. What you don't have, and you're seeing it this year, is you don't have depth. But it's much easier to get depth and find depth than it is to find stars and Pro Bowl players at, that, yeah. at those four positions. So that way they're good. Now, unfortunately, they've had injuries to their quarterback, uh, one of their corners, and their pass rusher. So three of the five, they've had major, major injuries and that's why you, they have the record that they have. Back to the offensive line. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we have seen some growth from Tyler Guyton yeah. um, over the last couple of weeks. And I, I, I'm i reminded of when I was covering the Raiders in 2018, when they drafted Colton Miller in the first round, who was an incredibly mm -hmm. raw player coming out of UCLA. And John Gruden 
forced him to play through bad play injuries, uh, made him practice in even in weeks where he shouldn't been practicing at all, basically just to try to toughen him up and get him through that first season. I think you're seeing that now with Guyton, he's been dealing with a, was that a knee injury that he suffered in the Pittsburgh game? He had a neck strain that he suffered in this game against Atlanta. Yeah. And yet the play is getting better. I think you just got to take your lumps and hope that he can improve as it's going on. And, I will say, if you can cut out the penalties, we are on the right track for Tyler Guy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think that's, you know, <clears throat> right now he's a little bit of a punchy Judy because he's a rookie. He's got a reputation at this point. So, but I do think that his play has been better, right? And and and, and he's, I, I think the things that are, are hard to improve on, like physically moving another human being out of a hole and, and you know, being physical and playing with a level of confidence, uh, I, I think that that's what you're starting to see more of, right? And, and, and how does that confidence translate to uh, uh, less penalties? What have we talked about has always been the issue with him, right? Is that he gets into his set, he gets anxious, he wants to get first contact, he bends at his waist to try to reach to make contact. Now that he's playing with a little bit more confidence, he's playing within himself, he can stay back, he can let the pass rusher come to him and then establish the kind of right kind of contact, balanced attack, balanced punch, as opposed to a reaching punch. These are By all the way, important things for him. Tyler Smith had all these same issues as a rookie as well, playing right. left tackle. And as we saw with Tyler Smith, it was it was better early on than what it yes. was from Guyton, yeah. but it got much better as the end of the season went on. I think Tyler Guyton had, or sorry, Tyler Smith had like 13 penalties his rookie yeah. season. Now, Guyton might surpass that, but it's not a uncommon thing for a rookie left tackle at all. Yeah, and, and again, like we, I think we talked about this, you know, in the in the offseason that if Guyton was going to be the starter at left tackle, that he was going to take his lumps. I, I, we just didn't know exactly, you know, what that would look like, how long it would the learning curve would be. <clears throat> I think we kind of got a false sense of a very uh, uh, kind of flattened learning curve uh, in training camp when we saw him performing so well and and, and yep. doing very well, and we expected. Uh, uh, we, it raised our expectations on where it should be the, and, it, and he ended up kind of coming in b back where we expected yeah. a first round, late first round tackle, you know, uh, performing at. So I don't think he's, you know, I think he's like you mentioned on track to, to go where he needs to be. I think he's going to be a good player. He has the mentality for it. He's got the physical, uh, nature of it. He's got the, obviously the athleticism for it. I, I again with all these guys, like you said, it, it's it's reps. Like that's why you have guys like Gruden forcing these guys on the field to continue to stay on the field yeah. because it's important for these guys to see as many reps as possible, internalize that, and then grow from. It, it was also important for Gruden that he that he would teach uh, Colton Miller how to play through injuries, right? Because you're not going to be a hundred percent anytime that you're an offensive tackle, right? He taught him that like, Hey, we're expecting the same level of play, whether you're a hundred percent healthy or 80% healthy, it's up to you to figure out a way to How? toughen up and play through these. And I, I, I commend Tyler Guyton for this in Atlanta. Like you could see there was a couple shots during the game where he's rolling his neck. It's clear. Mm -hmm. Like he's not a hundred percent. He's still out there. And I thought he did a good job of battling as the season kind of gets away from the Cowboys. And I think everybody knows where this thing is going. What we're going to be looking for, we're going to be changing our perspective on how we watch these games. It's going to be more player development rather than yeah. win losses. You want to see Guyton fight through some of these rough patches and kind of come out on the other side of it. And I think Atlanta might've been the breaking point for him. Yeah. Yeah. I think adversity is important for these guys, right? Cause they're, you can't avoid it in the NFL. We've talked about this a lot. So you have to find a way to fight through it. So for a guy to get some more adversity with, you know, obviously not playing well, uh, not feeling well and, and, and dealing with an injury and then having to come out of the game for a little while and then get back in and for him to go back in and still play solid football, despite not feeling at a hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, I think if anything, it proves it to himself more than anybody yeah. else that, that he can do that and that he belongs here. And that even when he's injured, he can, he can play through it and still perform. Yeah. I, I think I've seen enough from the offensive line, the young offensive lineman this year that I'm excited about what the future is going to be. Now it has not been perfect by any means. Like mm -hmm. this offensive line has struggled. They really haven't been able to run the ball in the first half of the season. Right. Yeah. But you've seen flashes of like, okay, this is what it could look like provided these guys grow up and maybe you get the right offensive line coach in here later.
Hmm. Yeah, we'll see about that too. I mean, you know, hopefully it's not a complete, if they have to change offensive line coaches, you know, hopefully it's not a complete reset. What this team really needs more than anything is stability at that offensive line coach. I, I'm yeah. really, really tired of them kind of just constantly rotating out. That's such an important spot. So I think it's time for those guys to get, you know, either stick with this offensive line coach or go get someone that you plan on having for a while because constant changes like that, it's not good for offensive line yeah. development. All right, let's talk about Mike Zimmer, who has had a very rough start as his second stint as the Dallas Cowboys defensive coordinator. Is there any scenario which he could be back in 2025? We will get to that next. This episode is brought to you by Ultimate Pro Football GM. Hey, Cowboy fans, remember our great partner, Ultimate Football GM? Well, they're back and they've added an amazing game mode that I need to tell you about. The game that has you set up in the shoes of a football franchise uh, or a GM you're going to now try to lead that team to glory, and it now has a new head coach career mode. So on top of being able to build your dynasty by drafting players, signing free agents, and hiring a coaching staff, you're going to be able to call the offensive plays during a game as well. It's so much fun. It's realistic, and it just got a whole lot better. Ultimate Pro Football GM is completely free. It has no ads. It's 100% playable offline, so you can play on the go as you want and when you want to. And here's a special offer for Locked On fans. Use the promo code Locked On NFL, all caps, inside the game store to receive a free boost to your franchise. Make sure to get it as this perk will jumpstart your play and give you the advantage that you'll want in creating a dynasty. To download the game, just visit ultimate gm.com or look it up in the app stores. Ultimate Pro Football GM, start your dynasty today. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Price Picks is the best place to get real money sports action. With over 10 million members and billions of dollars in award winnings, Price Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on Price Picks. Price Picks is the best way to get action on most states, including California, Florida, Georgia, and Texas. Price Picks is the only real money daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy so that your lineups stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. If your player leaves the first half and doesn't return, Price Picks keeps your lineup alive. Sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Go download the app today. Use promo code Lotten NFL to get fifty dollars instantly after you play your first five dollar lineup. Download the app today. Use promo code Lotten NFL. Prize picks run your game. Welcome back to the Lotten Cowboys podcast. We are answering your mailbag questions. This next one comes from Gorn. He wants to know. I don't really know how to formulate this into a question, but given the injuries to the de defensive side of the ball. Are we 100% against Mike Zimmer returning in 2025 with a different head coach? I think I think I get what you're asking, Goran, and and, yeah. and I, I think it's fair. I mean, like, look, I, I don't think that Zimmer has necessarily been given, you know, a full shot, right? Like, it, it does feel different than, than Nolan, where Nolan had an excuse in some ways that things would be bad, but he still was on top of that was also bad at coaching, you know, like the 2020 season was a disaster because of COVID. Uh, but then on top of that, Nolan was also a bad coach. I think that Zimmer has been okay. You know, I, I you know, like it's really a, a, a talent issue in a lot of ways. I mean, obviously things didn't look great early on, um, but even those issues, I think, again, were talent issues. Um, yeah, and it, I, I just, I have a hard time. I know people are saying, well, you had Micah Parsons the first three weeks of the season. I just have a hard time with it, making any judgments about September football when it comes to any team in the league. We saw the Ravens lose to the Raiders in September, right? And now yeah. you look back at that game and look how ridiculous that loss looks. Well, and also, like, let's be clear. I mean, the issue that is, you know, has been a season long issue hasn't gone away. Has nothing to do. Well, it does have something to do with Microsoft, but the issue is is stopping the run. Like, and and that has to do with the fact that you have just don't, don't have the talent that you need in the defensive interior to do such a thing. And then, 
you know, teams obviously made a concerted effort to avoid having to pass the ball against the Cowboys in, in obvious passing situations because they were so afraid of what the Cowboys would do to them. You know, obviously fast forward through several injuries after that, suddenly they lose that fear of, of throwing the football. And now it's like, you know, they already could run the ball very well. And that's only improved kind of slightly if it has at all. Uh, and on top of that, now that they, you know, they feel more confident running, the, uh, throwing the football. But I will say this, like, if you go look, despite what it feels like at times, if you go look at the pass rush metrics and, and, and pressure metrics, the Cowboys are not terrible, right? Like, and, and that's pretty crazy considering the fact that they're missing their starting four or their top four defensive ends. So um, this is all a very long winded way of saying, it's a tough evaluation, you know, because I do think that Zimmer has done some nice things schematically and the things that he can control, I think he has controlled well. I, I don't think that he's necessarily been crushed in a schematic sense. I think that the, the problems that have arisen out of on the defensive side of the ball, much more than on the offensive side of the ball, are more skill-based problems or more talent-based problems as the Cowboys deal with injuries and frankly, just a lack of talent on the defensive interior. Yeah, I mean, I agree with everything you said. Now, one of the things I was thinking about yesterday is, is Mike Zimmer the personality, the right coach for today's NFL? And I'm sure you saw the viral clip of yeah. him talking about the Trayvon Diggs touchdown where uh, Trayvon said that they were still confused and Zimmer basically said, it's man-to-man -man coverage. I don't know what to tell you, right? You look at some of the, the defenses in the NFL that have been really good this year. Uh, they have younger defensive-minded guys like Jesse Minter with the Chargers. I think he's 40 years old. Um, Dan Quinn's defense is obviously outperforming expectations. Do you think in today's NFL there is a certain type of defensive coach that maybe just works better with these players? Maybe. Wait, hold on. Let me rephrase that. Yeah. Do you think coaches that are getting that are really hard on players, kind of these okay. old-school defensive-minded coaches – are kind of not in style anymore. And it's the young guys, yeah, it's the young guys that are more players, coaches that are in vogue. I, I think that I think that if 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 your whole spiel is to be the you know the guy that's going to grind on his guys to get him to play like to, like if that's your whole spiel, then yes, I think that has gone the way of the dodo. I think that the reason Zimmer can hang around is that he does have a lot of, you know, good X's and O's knowledge. Does. I mean, a lot. Does. Like he's one of the smarter, you know, defensive coordinators as far as designing interesting blitz packages. And, you know, he understands defensive football on a very high level. And it's not just a go out and beat your man, or if you don't, I'll replace you type of defense. You know, if anything, Zimmer is more hard on his players about, uh, uh, following his defense to the letter of the T, right? As opposed to like you know pushing them to to you know play harder. Yeah. I I don't know. I, I think that Zimmer kind of. I do think to, to answer your question, I do think that that is sort of a passe way of coaching, uh, as far as like you know just beating your players into submission until they play better and, and faster in your defense. I don't know that Zimmer falls all the way into that category. Um. Because I think that he, like I said, the thing that actually makes those good defensive coordinators stand out is, you know, the ability to adjust, the the understanding of the X's and O's, being able to kind of come up with interesting schemes, counteracting the trends yeah. in offense, those sort of things. I think Zimmer could do those things, uh, but I, I do I do think that the kind of old school ball coach uh, side of his personality, it may rub some folks on the defense the wrong way for sure. Right. Pretty clearly been a disconnect between like him and Trayvon Diggs. And for whatever reason, that this doesn't seem to be working. I, I have mixed feelings in this because I really respect Mike Zimmer. He's gotten a terrible uh draw here with all of the injuries. I mean, they they have two Pro Bowl cornerbacks and they've not played a single game together yet this yep. season, right? Trayvon Diggs is now battling an injury. Uh Kalen Carson, who you weren't even hoping to start a fifth round corner, he gets hurt. Um, your defensive tackle situation has been atrocious, but I also wonder he's going to be 69 years old next off season. Is that a long-term answer for you? Or are you better oh. off to try to, are you better off to try to bring back maybe not bring back, but like hire somebody like Dennis Allen, right? 
who is never getting another head coaching job again, but has proven never. as a defensive mind or a Robert Sala, who is a very good defensive coordinator who will never get a head coaching job again and go with somebody like that. Yeah. I mean, I, let me be clear. Like I'm defending Zimmer in some sense, but I'm not necessarily advocating for him to come back for an, under another coach. I, I, I do think that, you know, I would like to kind of look into all the options that are available at the end of the off season. And I do think that there, you know, you just mentioned too, that I think might be better options than Zimmer right now. Um, I, I think more, my point on this is that I don't, I don't blame Zimmer or, you know, for a lot of what's gone on the issues on defense. Um, I, I think it's, you know, obviously the injury bug hit them pretty hard. That's having a major effect. And I think the talent aspect of it isn't necessarily his fault either. So uh, I, I think he's done a, a fine job, but I don't necessarily need him as the, you know, undisputed uh, defensive coordinator candidate for next season. I, I definitely want to kick the tires on everything that's available next year. Okay. Uh, let's talk about some players that are going to be playing for their jobs in the final nine games of the season, including the Cowboys right tackle, Terrence Steele. We'll get to that next. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets in the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. You're going to get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. We've got some fantastic games in Week 10, including several divisional games, uh, obviously Cowboys and uh, the Eagles. We've got ravens Bengals on Thursday night football. And then we've got a really great Sunday night football game between the Lions and the Texans. So go pick one of those games. Go bet on the money line. If you win your bet, you're going to get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That is FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Welcome back to the Locked on Cowboys podcast. We'd like to thank you for making us your first uh, listen of the day. For your second listen, check out the new Locked on NFL show. Two shows every single day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. Uh, we got Tony Wiggins in the afternoon, Tyler Rowland in the morning. They do a fantastic job. Check them out wherever you get your podcast. Uh, Landon, let's talk about some players that could be playing for their jobs. So there's there's different level levels of this, but I've got like six names that I want to run through. Donovan Wilson, he is owed $5.3 million next year. Uh, do you think that he has any chance of returning in 2024? I, I, I would imagine not. I, just simply because I think that, you know, his play is such at this point now that, uh, you know, and I think he played a better game on, on Sunday. Right? He did. This is his best game of the year, I think. Yeah. Uh, but I, I do think that it's just one of those things where um, the money has made him expendable. You know, like it's, it's, it's his, it's hard to kind of justify it in with all the up, up and down play that we've seen from him, especially when you have guys in the, waiting in the wings that you kind of want to see. I think it's really unfortunate that Wanye Thomas is in the uh, concussion protocol yeah. because I, again, I just really need to see him playing more. Right. Um, but we saw a little bit more of, of McQuamu in there. Uh, he was playing mostly kind of slot corner, but I, I just think that you've got these guys a couple of different young guys that you like, it's probably time to start getting looks at those guys. And if you're trying to save a little bit of money here and there, I just don't know that the money difference between, uh, 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 you know, let's we'll see Marquise bell and, and, yeah. and, and yeah. Donovan Wilson is, uh, is, is, you know, worth it is, is, is representative of the play difference that you're getting between. Well, we should throw in Malik hooker as well. Cause he'll yeah. be, he'll be 30, I believe next year. Uh, you can save about $4 million if you cut him. Now, I don't think he's been as bad as Donovan Wilson, but I don't think he's been great either. I think he's another one that needs to play really well over these next two months in order to save his job. Yeah, I agree. I mean, just another situation where – and I don't think it's necessarily like, you know, uh, 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 adjusting to a defense or something, anything like that. Like the play that we've seen has been, you know, kind of – 
football actions, like you know, missing tackles and and you know, uh, getting lost and and you know, just uh, uh, taking bad angles and and, yeah. and you know, just it, it's that sort of thing. So, um, I, I definitely think that uh, you know, they 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 should be trying to increase the the down roster safeties playing time just to kind of get more opportunities for them yeah. to see what they've got because. Uh, again, and, and as like we said, as we kind of transition more into a uh, an evaluation uh, uh, view of this team this season, uh, I think you know th- there's there's very little downside to rotating those safeties more. I mean, you're not even risking you know your potential very much of the game. So mm-hmm. I think it's one of the easy positions where I think you can get some evaluation done without you know hurting your team's in game chances as well. So they they should definitely avail themselves of that. Uh- Let's stay in the secondary. Uh, this one maybe is a little bit controversial, but Trayvon Diggs. I mean, you, you, he's under contract, and I don't think he's played terribly. Honestly, you know, I think there's been moments where things have not looked great. There's been certainly some tackling moments that have not looked great. Um, I don't think he's been playing terrible enough to to lose his job, especially with since he just signed a contract. No, it's true. Now. The Cowboys are going to get into a situation. I mean, it could start this offseason where they're going to have to decide whether they want to pay the Ron Bland or Trayvon Diggs. That's true. I, I think the Bland injury is maybe put that on the back burner, and I wouldn't be surprised if they just go in to the fourth year of his deal. I can't believe we're already going into the fourth year of Deron Bland's contract mm. uh, and just kind of see how things play out. But it, it, he would have to play so poorly in order for that to be a conversation, yeah. but it's, it's there. Terrence Steele. Um, the Cowboys could designate him as a post June one cut and say 14 million in 2025. What do you think about that one? This one's interesting to me, right? Because I really like awesome Richards and, and I think we would need to see uh, a little bit more before we would be comfortable. Like, you know, even considering that kind of move. Right. Uh, but if you do like awesome at guard or tackle. I like him at tackle. I mean, I think he, I think he plays well at tackle. And, and and even if you're talking about a situation where maybe he plays left and you moved Guyton to the right, it, I you know whatever. Like I think what works. But having said that, I think I want to continue the continuity, right? Like so, I would yeah. rather not move Guyton to the right side. I would rather try to see if you can get awesome some snaps at right tackle. But all that is not like the plan. Like if if you got rid of of Terrence Steele you need to be prepared for the fact that you're going to be drafting an offensive tackle high next. Season. Well, so, what, what if you did Tyler Smith at left tackle, Tyler Guyton at right tackle, T, you know, TJ Bass at right guard and awesome Richards at left guard. And then you plan on drafting an interior offensive lineman early on day two. You still need another tackle, right? Cause you, you need a swing tackle, you know? And, and so I, I just, it's a lot uh, yeah. of moving pieces. It's for a four, lot of moving pieces. And, and frankly, million. especially since Terrence Steele played decently and, and seemingly trending back in the right direction, like if he can continue to play well the rest of the season, you can have some hope that maybe, you know, it just took him a little bit longer to kind of recover from everything and to get back into the swing of things. Uh, I, I would say that like that, this is an evaluation that needs to wait until the end of the season. Let's see how the rest of the season yeah. plays out. Well, because, that's, just because that's it's the so point. difficult to replace him, right? Yeah. You know? I think that's the point. Like if he plays really well, the final nine end of the season, it's a non-starter. We're not even talking about it, but if it's yeah. continues to be very up and down, maybe we do have a conversation there. Two other players that I want to mention really quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, Jake Ferguson isn't playing for a job because he's their starting tight end. Yeah, but he's eligible to get. I mean, he, after this year, he's eligible to get get a new contract. I wonder if we're going to find out over the next nine games. Hey, is he somebody that you want to ink to a long term deal, or is he somebody that we're going to do the Dalton Schultz path of like, here's your rookie contract, who's here's two franchise tags that are cheap, and then we're moving on. Yeah, it sure felt like you know after the first few years of his career that it was not going to be the Dalton Schultz route that he was yeah. going to be potentially a long term situation. You know, it's been it's it's not been a great season so far, it, it, or at least it's been a fine season, but certainly not like let's ink him to a big time contract sort of season, right? No. So, um, I think he's he's got a lot. He still has a lot that he needs to show this season before uh, he kind of gets back on track to where he, he was. hasn't been bad. Just to be clear, no, like, he no, has not been no. bad, but is he hasn't been up to his standard. That that I think that's the thing, right? Like, is this somebody that you want to give 14, 15 million dollars a year to? 
think that's what we're going to find out over the next nine games or so. Uh, last one, Jalen Tolbert, same kind of situation, right? He still has a year left on his deal. He's going to be on the roster in some shape or form, but is he the number two receiver or is he somebody that's more of a number three, number four? I think that's what we're going to learn over these next two months. Yeah. And, and obviously the, the inclusion of Mingo in there obviously complicates that for him a little bit as well. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how, what, what Tolbert does with the rest of his time before uh, you know, Cooks comes back from his injury and before Mingo can kind of get worked in there. Uh, he's got a real opportunity to kind of uh, audition himself for a larger role. We'll see how it goes. All right. That is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Locked On Cowboys your first listen every single day. For your second listen, check out the new Locked On NFL show, two shows every single day. On our show tomorrow, we're going to do the crossover show uh, with Gino and Lou from Locked On Eagles. Can't wait for that one, Landon. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, those guys are good, though. So it'll be. Yeah, good. they are. Uh, go follow Landon on Twitter uh, at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier, and we will see you right back here tomorrow with the crossover edition of the mm -hmm. Locked On Cowboys podcast.